Now let's start getting into a new process called the factorial rule. So we just looked at the fundamental counting rule, and the key to that rule is that repeats are allowed. So if we still had order matters, just like in the fundamental counting rule, but repeats are not allowed, how does this change things? We may still be looking at the number of ways to choose the first and second item, but there's a slight twist. Consider this example. How many ways is there to rearrange the letters in the word pan? So I'm not saying make any three-letter word. I'm talking about rearrange these ex existing letters. So for example, map, PNA. It didn't say it had to be a word. It just said to arrange them. So we're just flipping those letters around. How many ways do we pick the first letter? And then once we pick the first letter, because we're rearranging from that set, what comes into play is what's left? What letter did we not choose the first time? And then, you know, how many ways is there to pick the last letter? Because there's only really going to be one letter left. But if you were thinking similar to the fundamental counting rule, we would say, okay, how many ways to pick the first letter? There's three to choose from. Once you pick that first letter, like maybe you picked N for nap, now there's second letter, there's only two choices left. Is it going to be AP or PA? And so when you get to the last letter, there's only one letter left. So there's only one way to pick it. So there's only six ways to rearrange the letters in the word pan. This one actually wouldn't have been too hard to find ourselves. We pick the first letter, N, A, or P. I don't know why I started with nap, but it's the same letters, right? P, A, N. We picked the first letter. Then we go to pick the second letter. If we started with N, our second letter can only be A or P. If we started with A, we only have N or P as a choice for the second letter. If we started with P, we only have N or A as the second choice. Now notice it was one choice here, and then each of these branched off into two to choose from. I said one, but that was actually three, right? There was three lines coming out of this starting spot. Each of these had two lines coming out. And so then when it comes to the next letter, if we've chosen N and A first, we only have the option of choosing a P. If we've chosen the N and the P, the A is the only lever that hasn't been chosen. A and N only leaves us with a P, etc. And you could turn all of these into all the different words. But the thing to notice is when we created this tree, there was six different items, which is exactly what we had said. So this leads us to the factorial rule, which is written as n factorial. So that exclamation mark after a number is called factorial. So using the factorial rule is because order matters for the problem you're solving, repeats are not allowed, and everything that you have available to you is being selected. So whenever you see that exclamation mark following a number, then think of it as a mathematical operator. Plus tells you to add two numbers. Square root tells you to find you know, what number squared equals that value. So when you see a factorial symbol, this is telling you to multiply every digit from n down to 1. So whatever this digit is down to 1. So for example, 5 factorial is how this would be read. And we're going to multiply every whole number from 5 down to 1. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, I'll get multiplied. And as always, you multiply from left to right. So, you know, 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. 60 times 2 is 120. And 120 times 1 is 1. And 120 still. So we would get 120. Now, these numbers get huge really fast. So fortunately, there's a button on your calculator that will find those. And also, 0 factorial is 1. I mean, your calculator will give you that also. But... It seems like, how do you multiply from 0 down to 1? And you don't. This is saying, if you have a set of numbers and, you know, there's no way to pick it, you just have the 1 selection.